When it comes to finances, what you don't know can hurt you. A recent report by the National Financial Educators Council shows 38% of people felt a lack of financial literacy cost them at least $500, with 15% saying it set them back by $10,000 or more. And those aren't the only alarming statistics. Here to talk through some others and how you can avoid being one of them is financial advisor Chris Locke. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Well, many people who feel that they aren't financially literate say it's stressing them out. A 2018 study found 53% of adults say just thinking about their financial situation makes them anxious. So what can we do to kind of calm our fears? Be on a budget, right? right. The, the fear comes from not knowing what you don't know. And so if you don't know where your money's going, it's going to cause a lot of anxiety. If you know that, and some people are scared to do that, right? The budget, that B word scares people. Well, speaking of budgets, a 2019 survey found three in five adults say they don't have a budget and they don't keep track of their spending. So is that where things can go awry? And I mean, why is a budget so important? How can, where do we start with that? I mean, how do you, what do you budget? Everything, everything that's important to you, right? You're going to figure out what's important to you when you actually do that budget. The key with the budget is a lot of people they think that they're going to get it right that first month and it's not right you're getting better but it's going to take several months to really figure out where it's going because things are different every month especially if you have kids different expenses they move the problem is as you get into it about halfway into the month and something throws a wrench in your budget and throw your hands up in the air i quit this didn't work you can't do that you got to stick with it even if you've got a bad month you got to go okay we're here that's a new month let's let's do it again and tracking your spending is probably very eye-opening for it a is. lot of people. And it's usually restaurants. A lot of it's, it's mm -hmm. restaurants and food. You're busy. It's easier to just run through a drive-through or do whatever. Um, and a lot of people are, are when, they, when they finally see that, it's very eye-opening. They know that before they run the budget, but when they see it, they don't realize how big that number can be. Okay, according to an analysis from J.P. Morgan, Morgan Chase, two out of three families don't have an emergency fund. So what is that and how much do we need? Emergency fund, it's just that, right? It truly is for emergencies. And so you've got to have something set aside so that your first instinct isn't to go put it on a credit card and now you're paying interest on that emergency. Different people need different amounts. You know, the goal is to have at least $1,000. If you're still trying to get out of debt, you know, focus on that, but still have a little bit in savings to where if something catches you off guard, you're not adding to your debt. Okay, another interesting statistic, a career builder survey found about four in five adults live paycheck to paycheck. Now that seems really high, so are we just living beyond our means or is it just because we're not keeping track? How do we fix it? Well, and the funny part is it doesn't matter what your income is, whether you make you know a little or you make a lot, that statistic is true. And so you're right, I think as your income increases, your lifestyle increases, and so it doesn't change. Okay, let's talk debt. Right now, Americans own a, owe a record high of credit card debt, copping $1 trillion. A recent survey found 60% of us had credit card debt in the past year, with 40% carrying balances month to month. So what's the danger with credit cards? Right now, it's the interest rates for sure, right? And they make it to where the minimum payment is not a lot, and so you feel like that's a safe place to go. And you realize when you're making that payment, you're probably only paying the interest on it and you're not really making any headwinds while you continue to add new money to it. So it's a, it's a downward spiral. So again, if you have the budget in place, ideally that credit card is not necessary because now we've got the emergency fund in place and we've got a line item for our different budgets where we're spending money based on our income. If we're doing that well, then we don't have that excess that we're trying to figure out how to pay for things, which is normally where that credit card comes in. All right, last question, savings. A 2019 survey showed one in four U.S. adults didn't feel confident about their savings habits and felt really concerned about retirement. So we talked about emergency funds. So how do we change our savings and retirement looking toward the future? You've got to look at it in short-term and long-term goals. Where do I want to be at the end of the year? Maybe where do I want to be at the end of the month? And then where do I want, what does retirement look like? How far away is that for me? And if I can break it out, you may not be where you want to be in retirement, but you also know you've got a long ways to go before you're going to be there. And if you'll just start now and start making those steps toward it, you're going to be able to, to achieve those goals where if you're thinking, I've got to get all of this done in the next few months, that's going to add a lot of anxiety and stress to you. But if you can know, if I can just be on a plan and get started in the right direction, even if it's just a small step, we're moving in the right direction. We're going to hit those goals. All right. Financial advisor Chris Locke with ways to help us avoid becoming a part of financial literacy statistics. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me.